Thanks to Brilliant for supporting my channel. Hey y'all, it's Jordan, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about three tech ethics books that I think you should read in 2021. These are all books that I read over the past year that I thought were really great overviews of the topics that they happen to cover and were also approachable so you don't necessarily need a technical background in machine learning and artificial intelligence to understand what they're talking about and why it's important to consider ethics in the realm of technology development. Consider subscribing if you're new here and want to keep learning more about artificial intelligence. And if you'd like to see what I'm currently reading, you can follow me on Instagram and TikTok where I tend to post a little bit more of the books that I'm currently going through. Also, if you wanna check out the fourth book, which I debated putting into this video, you should head on over to Nebula and check out the Nebula Plus version of this video. All right, so the first book, which I think is a great read if you're interested in learning a lot more about kind of the practical implications of artificial intelligence systems and the impacts that they've already had is Atlas of AI by Kate Crawford. So this book came out earlier this year, actually only a couple months ago, and it's unlike most other AI popular science books I've ever read in a really good way, actually. The author, Kate Crawford, is one of the co-founders of the AI Now Institute at NYU, as well as their director of research. She's also a principal investigator over at Microsoft Research. She's an associate professor at one of the UC schools and I believe also at a college in France. So she's an accomplished AI scholar and has come out with this awesome book called Atlas of AI, which essentially goes through her journey to different places to explore the practical implications of artificial intelligence. And I think that's actually part of the reason why she calls it Atlas of AI. Kate actually travels to different locations around the world from small mining communities where minerals and different metals that are important for computer manufacturing are extracted to a museum in Philly to look at their exhibit on phrenology and relate it back to things like facial recognition. And overall, it's just a really interesting exploration of the impact that AI systems have in areas that you just might not think about a lot. Like the, the book opens with her going and visiting this small mining community. And even though hardware is something that I've actually started talking about on this channel, because it's something that feels like it's often discounted in the field and just not really talked about a ton, this goes way further into that than I was even familiar with. And I learned a ton about how these systems affect people in ways that you might not even think about when we talk about things like algorithmic fairness and algorithmic bias, but also just when it comes to like building computational systems. Another really interesting thing that she gets into in this book is the cloud, because whenever we talk about cloud computing, it's always imagined and kind of discussed as this far off thing that sits in the sky that doesn't really take any physical shape. And one of the things that she does is visit one of those cloud server farms to see what the actual physical manifestation of the cloud looks like and how it impacts the surrounding community as well as the environment. So I thought that this was a fantastic book. I'd highly recommend checking it out. I'll have links to all of the books in the description, their affiliate links. Um, but this is definitely, if you're gonna read anything on AI this year, check out this book. And if you're not convinced, Kate Crawford did a great interview with the MIT Tech Review that you can check out that delves more into how this book came to be and what her thinking behind it was, as well as her thinking on things like tech ethics and whether or not technology is the solution to everything, which, spoiler alert, she does not think that, that is the case. So I'd highly recommend checking that out if you're on the fence. All right, so the second book that you should definitely check out is Invisible Women by Caroline Criado Perez. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, so apologies in advance. As you can see from the cover, I have a monitor down here so I can actually see. Um, it focuses on data bias in a world designed for men, and it's a really interesting look into how the kind of default assumption that systems are set up for men impacts everything from city planning to cell phones to artificial intelligence systems and bias and data sets and stuff like that. Um, I read this last year and I actually read it, I believe as a library rental and then ended up buying a hard copy because I thought it was so good and wanted to have a hard copy around. And it's just a really interesting insight into both how systems are conceived of and how the default male assumption impacts the conception of those systems, but also into the fact that often changing those systems in a way that increases gender equality can actually make the system better and may end up being more cost-effective. So there's one example, I think in like the first chapter first or second chapter of this book, where she recounts the story of this town in Sweden that was essentially reviewing their town's policies as part of a gender equality initiative. 
and one of the council people for the town makes a joke that at least their snow plowing policies can't be gendered. But after making that joke, people actually start to look into whether or not the policies themselves are gendered. And it turns out that the snow plow policies tend to preference things like major freeways, basically the places where people would typically be commuting to and from work in their cars, which tends to be more men than women, and would leave pedestrian and public transit routes or walkways to be plowed last, which actually resulted in a significant number of hospitalizations and injuries, which ends up costing the town and the country a bunch of money and also decreases productivity because if people are injured, they can't go to work. So the town decides to actually preference these public transit routes and pedestrian walkways and finds that they essentially save a significant amount of money just by shifting that policy that no one ever thought of as gendered because the people who were creating the rules were thinking, oh, I have to like drive to work and those people were mostly men and they weren't considering the women or caretakers in their lives that didn't necessarily have those same experiences. But in short, I thought this was a super interesting book. I think that on this channel, we've talked a lot about unconscious bias and implicit bias and how a lot of the bias that we see in AI systems isn't necessarily someone going out with malicious intent to try to create this system that's rigged against certain groups of people. It's just that we don't necessarily think of certain issues with our data sets or certain issues with our models because we don't have those lived experiences and so it's not a question that would pop into our minds. And I think that this book highlights a ton of great examples of how that is so widespread and is ingrained into so many systems within and outside of artificial intelligence and how changing those systems is a pretty doable. Um, I think that one of the big takeaways from this was that, especially when it comes to policy, it's actually not necessarily that hard to fix them, but also that fixing them may end up creating better systems and better societies as a whole. So book number two. Finally, the last book is Race After Technology by Ruhop Benjamin. I believe this came out in 2019. I'm not actually sure. Yeah, 2019. Ruhop Benjamin is a professor of African American Studies at Princeton, and she researches things including the intersection of emerging technologies and race. And essentially, this book looks to analyze the intersection of new technologies, emerging technologies, and societal hierarchies. And I think that actually similar to Invisible Women, it's a really interesting peek into how systems can be designed and can perpetuate biases unintentionally because the people in the room don't necessarily think of the use cases or the issues that might come up when it comes to unbalanced data sets or even just applications and conceptions of different models. Benjamin proposes this new concept called the new gym code, which shows how a range of discriminatory designs encode inequality by explicitly amplifying racial hierarchies, by ignoring but thereby replicating social divisions, or by aiming to face racial bias but ultimately doing quite the opposite. And this probably sounds like a depressing read based on that, but I think, whoa, what just happened? I think that it's actually nice that the last two chapters or so focus on solutions that people might use to either identify bias in these systems or create systems that are as unbiased as possible, which as we talk about in other videos, the definition of fairness is its own nebulous thing, as well as just engage the communities that are affected by different algorithms in the process of developing and deploying them. So I think it's a great overview of essentially algorithmic fairness issues, but I also think that it's a great primer for anyone who's interested in potentially getting involved in advocacy around policy in this area. Um, to get kind of a basic technical understanding of what's going on, as well as some ideas on how we might develop policies and structures that make algorithms good for everybody. And this is all to say, I think part of the reason why I made this video was to point out that there are a lot of overlapping disciplines when it comes to artificial intelligence. So if you're interested in AI policy or tech policy, you don't necessarily have to be a practitioner to get involved in it. You can come at it from different angles. However, I still would definitely recommend having some technical experience in any field that you want to enter so that you can have informed discussions and make informed choices on those topics. And if you're looking for a place to build that technical understanding, you should start with Brilliant, a website and app that has courses on everything from the basics of math, science, and computer science to quantum computing, cryptocurrencies, and machine learning. Their courses are laid out like a story, broken down to pieces so that you can tackle them a bit at a time. I've personally been chipping away at their cryptocurrency course 
because I'm interested in learning more about the intersections of blockchain and machine learning. The best part is there's no tests, no grades, so you can just pick a course based on what you're interested in and get going. Feeling stuck or made a mistake? You can read the explanations to find out more and learn at your own pace. If you'd like to join me in a community of 8 million learners and educators today, click on the link in the description down below or go to brilliant.org slash Jordan, sign up for free. In fact, the first 200 people to go to that link will also get 20% off the annual premium subscription. Clicking on that link also supports my channel, so thanks in advance for your support. Otherwise, if you like this video, let me know by smashing the like button, subscribing to my channel. If you want to check out more books like this, I actually have a bookshop list of them, which I will include in the description for you to check out once you get through reading these three books. Otherwise, if you want to follow my PhD life, you can do so via the vlog channel, my Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram, and otherwise, I will see you guys on Monday. Bye!